Okay, first of all, um, on behalf of my son, I would like to apologize and send my sympathies to all the victims that were involved in this case. Um, but I would also like to clear up some things that I've been reading and hearing on the news. Um, as far as the situation that happened Tuesday, uh, my son was never at the hospital. He uh, was home when the incident happened. Uh, when he had the first incident happen on Tuesday, it happened at, at his residence, okay? And then I got the call. I was at work, I got the call, and I left my job, and me and my wife, and we left to come to Orangeburg to try to de-escalate the situation. On the way there, on the way here to Orangeburg, uh, uh, his girlfriend called and told us that, you know, he had basically flipped out. Uh, he, he's a mental, he's a mental Ill, Ill patient. He hadn't been taking his medication now that we know since August, okay? Um, but he flipped out and started, had a little squabble, the gun went off, and, and then uh, she called us, let us know that something was going on with him, and I immediately told her to call the police because I, uh, he had already had a situation that happened before that he had an episode with, and, and it also turned into a bad situation, but not quite as worse as this. So uh, I told her to immediately call the police, all right? And uh, after uh, I told her that uh, we were still on the phone with her, she didn't call the police because she loves him, and she didn't want to uh, have him go to jail. She didn't, she's a young lady, she didn't understand the danger she was in, and she was trying to protect her friend, okay? So I myself personally called the police on the on the way on in route to Orangeburg, and uh, the, the the sheriff department came out to the house, and when they uh, uh, took on the situation, uh, my son had ran away from the house and hid the gun, and uh, and then when they got there, they got a hold of him, they uh, they 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 got the gun, and then they got on the phone with me and let me know the situation. But I, I insisted to the sheriff's department that they take him in custody because I knew that the situation was very bad. Uh, the, the officer told me that he could not do it because of the fact that the victim had told him that, that nothing had happened to her, okay? So I told him for the sake and the security and the, and the safety of the victim and suspect, would you please take my son in custody so that we won't have him hurt anybody else? They told me that they could not do it, okay? And, and uh, so when I, when, I, when I got to the house, uh, there was only two officers there. Uh, uh, they, they informed me that they were only there to ensure, give me the, to, to give me back the gun, or give me the gun, and to ensure that uh, we take him to the hospital. That was their only uh, job there. So when we got there, they gave me the gun, I signed over the gun, and then uh, uh, we, we went, proceeded to go in the house, talk to my son, and convinced him to go with us to the hospital. But we didn't go to the hospital. We went to the mental health center, okay? This is a center that he has been going at because of the situation. He's been trying to get help. And he couldn't get, he's, it's like he, he just can't get the help that he needs, okay? So we took him there and they told us they couldn't do nothing for him today to bring him back on Friday, okay? That was not the hospital, that was the mental health center, okay? Um, so we left the mental health center, took him home, all right? Tried to console him and calm him down and make him as comfortable as possible and told him, because we had to go back to Georgetown because we had business there to send to. Two. And then we told him we would come back in the morning to make sure that he goes to the hospital. So the next morning, when we went home, and uh, we're on the way home, okay, he was having another episode, okay? Uh, but it didn't get to the point yet where how it happened Wednesday. But he actually, him and my son, my other son, they went to a gun shop. And my younger son, not knowing the extent of the seriousness of it, purchased a gun for him, okay? Now, uh, after, the, after that fact, okay, he came back to the house, and that's when his girlfriend saw the gun, and that's when she contacted us and told us that he had another gun, 
we immediately told her to call the police, okay? And so after talking for a few minutes and deciding whether or not to turn back around, they actually got the gun from him, okay? And they took the gun and they hid the gun to the victim's house, okay? And after, after the gun was hidden at the victim's house, uh, he went, I guess, everything kind of de-escalated. He kind of went to sleep and everything. So we continued to go home. So we went home and called us later when we got to the house to make sure everything was all right and everything was fine. And so the next morning, okay, we were at work. We would, we would, I went to work that morning because I had to go to work because of certain things in my job requirement. And I was going to leave there to come back to Orangeburg as soon as I can. I could. So uh, about roughly 8 o'clock, maybe a little bit earlier, 7.30, something like that, uh, my wife called me and told me that uh, the, his girlfriend and him was at the hospital and they, and they were waiting to get the shot. So they did everything that they said they was going to do. They went to the hospital that morning to get the, to get the shot. My son sat there for over an hour. And my question is, why didn't the hospital, knowing that he was a patient of them, they already had records of him, his illness, and they know why he was there, why didn't they secure him in a room? And all of this would have never happen. And I, and, and I can assure you that if you come to Georgetown County and you go to Georgetown Memorial, if you walk in there and say that you have a mental illness, the first thing they do is they put you in a room and secure you so you can't hurt no one or either leave the hospital or any situation like that. So uh, when uh, the situation escalated, because they told him they didn't have a bed for him, and they wanted him to come back at some other time. I don't know if they wanted him to come back later that day or that Friday. But obviously from the sickness, he was already sick. He was dealing with the sickness from the day before, and he really needed that shot. And he wanted that shot real bad. That's why he got up and fought it all night to come back to the hospital to get the shot so he can feel better. They denied him that. They denied him that. For whatever reason they did, they denied him that. And all I want to know is why is it in this country, as many Ill mental illness cases that we have, uh, many kids getting killed in schools, people getting killed in churches, people now it's happening in the hospitals, nobody has stepped up to the plate and done anything to help these young people and make sure that these policies are put in place that make sure that if they ever come to the hospital for mental illness, that they can be secured right away. Not turned around and say, go home and come back Friday. Because that, to me, that's negligence. That's negligence. Well, he's been diagnosed as schizophrenic, but uh, this was over two years ago, all right? And he's been on medication, and, and as far as we knew, he was still taking the medication. He was taking, at first he was on the pills, and then they, took, they started putting him on the shot because he wasn't too good at taking the pills when he's supposed to. So uh, after you know, his first incident, uh, that's what led us to getting to this point. The doctor diagnosed him with schizophrenia, but we don't know for sure if the medicine that he had was actually working or if he needed more uh, uh, or more uh, higher medication to solve his problem. We never got to that point because of the, just the disarray of, every, of, every, of everything that was going on. Uh, you know, he would get his medication and then he'd go back to school and he was going to school down here. So, you know, he was doing good for a long time. And, but I, I'm not saying that I'm not, I'm, I'm condoning what he did. I'm not saying that he has no responsibility in what he did. It is a bad thing what happened. And, but I want people to know that his character, that is not my son. That's what you see in that courtroom, that is not my son. I can show you videos and pictures of my son. That is a young, vibrant guy that wants to have a future. And that's why he moved to Orangeburg and moved from Georgetown because Georgetown also has a violent juvenile uh, type of situation going on because there's a lot of killing and different things going down in that area. So he begged and pleaded with us that he wanted to come to Orangeburg and get away from that so that he could go to school and get his education. And 
it, it, it just didn't work out that way because of the way he was trying to get help for his mental situation. Nobody really stepped it up to the plate to help him. We did all we can do. We called people, they would tell us, okay, well, we're gonna set up an appointment, but we never hear anything again. So we just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. But my son is not a murderer. He's not a killer. He's not a violent person. He's mentally ill and he needs help. And I'm not trying to get him out of jail. I'm trying to make sure he gets the treatment that he needs. I don't care if it takes three, five, ten years. As long as he gets the right treatment, that's all that matters to me, my wife, and our family. And you know, not having, not, not being financially capable of being able to purchase certain, like going in and pay for a, a, a screening or different things, they send you through so much red tape. Now this person need help immediately, okay? And you have to go through so much red tape just to get him help. And I think that is a shame in 2019 in this country that young people are being neglected the way they are, turned away when they are coming and crying for help. And then after it all, it, everything that happens bad, we want to say, oh, he's a killer, or he's a murderer. That's not right. Yeah, it's a legal gun. He bought the first gun he bought before uh, he got the illness. And he had that gun ever since. And, uh, and But once he got diagnosed with the schizophrenia, I was trying to get the gun back from him, but you know, it, it, it was hard for me because it's in his name and, it's his, and, and he hadn't done anything for them to take the gun from him. So I basically just kept telling them, just be careful with the gun and don't do anything crazy with it. But yes, all of the guns that he bought were legal. If there was guns Except for the last one that they bought was uh, supposedly a straw purchase because you're not supposed to buy a gun for somebody else. But my son is only 21 years old. He's young, that's his big brother. He lived with him, he moved down here with him. He's only one to be with his big brother and do what his big brother tell him to do. He what didn't understand what he was doing. What was the gun that purchased at the gun store? From what I from what I heard, it was a 223 automatic assault weapon. I'm, I'm just as shocked as you are. How did he world he get, I mean, through, the, the, the hospital has to take some kind of responsibility. They're supposed to have security and you have patients and kids and stuff in there. They're supposed to pick things like, I was a security guard and I know, I drive truck now, but I've been in the military and all of that, okay? And I know these protocols. So people are not doing their job. And, they, and then they allow these kids to get in all this trouble and then they turn around and say, oh, he's a killer, he's a murderer. That's not true. My son is not a killer, and he is not a murderer. And if you take everything in me to prove that, I will prove it. You can tell if, you see the size of my son. If he wanted to hurt somebody with a semi-automatic weapon, he would have just got hit one person. You understand what I'm saying? He was fighting that thing the whole time. He was fighting it. And the thing that should let you know that is that he surrendered the gun to the security guard before the cops even really got there. And they're trying to take all the credit like they did everything, but no, my son realized when, when he was going through what he was going through, he realized what he was doing was wrong, and he immediately went to the, 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 the security guard and, and surrendered his weapon. I raised my son for 23 years. I've never seen him do anything like this, okay? He's a big teddy bear, that's what I always call him. He looked big and strong and mean, but he's just a, the nicest guy and the, and the easiest going guy, you know? But I did not expect that to happen, and I wasn't expecting it to happen, and I knew that something really was wrong with him why that happened. And also that the hospital had failed him so, to a certain extent. Did he ever get the shot? I, I don't think he ever got the shot. I don't know. They're so tight-lipped, they won't even tell us anything. So I'm going to try to find out, because he really needs that shot, because I'm looking at him today, and he looks like he's still in that state of mind almost. So even if he's incarcerated, he still needs that medication. So that's what I'm asking for and that's what I'm demanding for. And, and I just wanted to just put that out there because I don't want false accusations and things to come into play when my, when my son's life is at stake. The, what we want out of this whole situation is that we want the victim to recover, fully recover, Okay, and we want all the victims to recover. And we want my son to be able to recover. Okay, because this is just as much traumatic for him as it is for everybody else. Okay, so that's all we want as a family and God-fearing people is we want everything 
to come to a better solution, okay? And I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to uh, excuse my son for anything that he did. I'm just trying to get the facts out there. What do you say to the victim's family? I say to the victim's family that we are sorry for what happened to your family member, and we are praying every night and every day for this person to recover, and we hope that everything turns out all right. And if there's anything that I can do or my family members can do, they can they, they are welcome to contact us and and, and call call us. Uh, him being young and big and strong, we figured he could take on whatever he could take on, and and, and it failed him. Okay, like I say, I'm not excusing his responsibility. He failed himself by not taking his drugs the way he's supposed to do it. But after the fact, once he goes and seeks help, that is when these other entities should step up and, and, and do what they need to do and save these kids because they're dying by the hour.